Premiere Pro new updates for April 2022. Hello, it's Peter Baker here, and you'll know if you're one of our members or customers of our courses, we have a training course on Premiere Pro, the video editing program, because it's very important for us voiceovers to know at least the basics of video editing to help get more work in synchronizing our voices to existing, usually non-English videos given by our clients. Now, if you're a voice artist and you don't learn video editing, you are leaving cash on the table. So. Have you updated to the latest version of Adobe Premiere Pro yet? You're very welcome to download the latest Premiere Pro from Creative Cloud. However, I suggest do not tick that option box saying delete old versions. I strongly recommend that with any new update of any software really, but particularly Premiere Pro, you carry on working on your old version until you're totally happy with the changes with the new version and any uh, bugs have been gotten rid of. Now, I have to admit that these days things aren't as bad as the old ones. I've been using Premiere Pro even before it was called Pro. Look, this original disc was just Premiere and I've been with it since day one. And the program was forever crashing in the old days. It's extremely stable these days, however, but I still strongly suggest you keep an old version of Premiere Pro on your machine. I've got two old versions actually, and explore the new features of the very latest version when you've got time and you're not under pressure to complete an important project because the way Premiere Pro works is that you can't open a project on the latest version of software on an earlier version. Just won't open, all right? So keep it on the early one. If that goes wrong, go to the next one. If that goes wrong, go to the <laughs> next version. That's what some people have done over the years. It's much more stable now, but at least keep one old version of Premiere Pro. All right, let's have a quick look at what the latest version offers for you. First of all, it has frame.io integration, which means that without leaving your timeline, other people can tune into your project, give you feedback on it. To be honest, this isn't something I find useful. It may be for a large organization where two or three people are working on exactly the same project. In my world, and probably yours as well, your client is not that technical, almost certainly hasn't got Premiere Pro, and do you really want your clients seeing what goes on behind the scenes? Never let daylight in on magic, I say. I don't want my clients drawing all over my screen. Look, I think a far better way to deal with clients who aren't technical is to export the whole thing as a flat video, upload it to Vimeo. There you can send the link to the review tab on Vimeo where the client can leave you time-coded comments. Now, the latest version of Premiere Pro also has improved version of speech to text. This is where you can highlight certain parts of the dialogue or the whole video and create subtitles or captions on screen automatically. Of course, like any speech to text, it has to be very carefully checked, which takes a lot of time. So you might as well do it manually in the first place. It's not accurate, no matter how well the speech is recorded. So it's a bit of a waste of time, but it's kind of cool for a bit when it works and is accurate. Media replacement in motion graphics templates has been updated. In this new version, After Effects users can make video layers and templates replaceable in Premiere Pro using drag and drop, all very laudable. But the biggest change is when you open your projects. Now, when you open a project, you may be shocked because you think, well, where's essential sound? Where's, where's color gone? Where's, oh, where's all the things at the top gone? Don't worry. Basically, they've neatened things up. It does make sense, and they haven't taken anything away. You can still do things the old-fashioned way if you wanted to. For example, here you've only got the Home Import, Edit, and Export. When you open a project, it defaults to Edit, so everything looks the same. Don't worry. Don't panic. If you click the little house, you get to basically your, your first page where you can open up new projects. Then you click back to Edit again. So let's take a look at where all these things at the top have gone. They're uh, over here. So if you click here, all your workspaces that you know, like learning and color and effects and audio, captions and graphics, they're all down here along with other custom areas that you have made. And they're quite easy, just one click to get to them. But they're out the way. They don't clutter up the top bit there. While we're in the top right-hand corner, top right hand here is maximize video output. Just clicking that one button. Wow, we see a big picture of TV's Katie Brody. 
and to get back to normal, it's the escape key. Now, this is seem to be a brand new, amazing feature. But of course, you in the know who've taken my course have known that this has been maybe a little known feature for a long time. You can look full frame at your current timeline. Um, you can still do it by holding control down and clicking the graph key. That's the uh, key to the left of number one on your keyboard. So control and graph key will do exactly the same thing. But now it's much easier clicking this top button. Also in the top right hand corner, they've got something new called Quick Export. Well, I'm not quite sure why we need that, because you might as well just use a proper export, which is even more flexible. But yeah, OK, click that button and then you can carry on editing if you want to. Um, but I'll come to the proper export, the newly designed export panel very soon. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's go to Import over here, because that has been totally changed. It's much better, I think, because you've got nice big pictures here. You can check for yourself what pictures you're importing, and you can scrub through them. Look, wow, you can scrub through them. Uh, right, OK, so maybe the pictures weren't quite big enough for you before, the old-fashioned way, but now there's no excuse. These are the sample pictures, by the way. I'm not showing you my, uh, my rushes here. But obviously, you've got all the drives down here on the left-hand side and other sources. Also, on the new import page, there's copy media. You can create a new bin and create a new sequence if you want to. But you don't have to. You can go back to good old-fashioned edit and do everything like you normally did. OK, file and import and do all your normal stuff there or using the shortcuts. All those still work. So now to the pièce de résistance, the new export, which is so much better. It's cleaner, it's neater, it's more obvious. So what do we want to export? We want the work area, the entire source, source in out. Normally it would be the work area with the bar that goes across the top on your edit. And everything here is much cleaner. You can also upload directly to Vimeo. Yes, you can publish it. You sign into Vimeo, for example, select your channel, and up it get loads. You, I mean, it doesn't really save you that much time, but it's sort of nice to be able to do it within Premiere Pro. You can do the same with YouTube as well. You can actually upload to YouTube, select your channel, and, and do all your stuff here as well. The great thing is that you can export lots of things at once. Yes, I know Media Encoder did that and does it. But it's just nice to do it within Premiere Pro. So don't get scared. You'll soon get used to this. I hope you found that useful. Please check out our course on Adobe Premiere Pro from beginner to pro at voiceovermasterclass.com, as well as all our other courses on learning to be a voiceover, other software programs we look at like WavePad, Adobe Audition, and lots of other things as well. So check out voiceovermasterclass.com. Have a great day.